I used to be a, a less than average drummer until I joined this professional setup. With the countless hours of practicing put in in the studio, I get better. Uh, it's like any sport, the more you practice, the better you get. And that's basically what, what Parable 15 has done for my drumming career. And if you speak to anybody that's known me five, six years ago, they will tell you that I'm a completely different drummer and I take it all down to, to Parable 15 and the um, hours that I practice here. But as you can see here, uh, we, uh, we are currently using an electric kit. Now, some people would say, oh, is that nice, is it not nice? But when we tour and we play shows, obviously we use uh, acoustic kit there. I can mark up drums and I've got a phenomenal sound engineer that makes me sound fantastic. But obviously in studio with the technology that we currently have available to us, I can program this kit here to sound like 50 different kits and every single drum and cymbal I can make sound differently. So if we went acoustic, we would have had to have all these different mics and setups and stuff. And that's the equipment that we need to make an acoustic kit sound like we can make this kit sound is gonna cost an enormous amount of money. And at Parable 15, if you've been to one of our shows, you will see we just, we don't compromise. It is nice to work not just for the producer, but with the producer. Even on our previous record, we all sat together and we discussed what we're going to do. And I threw some in ideas and Mark threw some in ideas. And when we didn't see eye to eye, we kind of compromised that we were both happy. And that's what this production team means. It's not producer and uh, you do as I say. It's a producer and I'll listen to what you're thinking and we'll come up with a with a great compromise. We obviously have not tracked the whole album yet, um, so it's difficult for me to say, but we have tracked two, um, and it's also, it's, it's a difficult coin toss, but I think Tattoos over Crossfire uh, was my favorite one so far. People ask, why do we progress to the more rock side where we used to be a country band? And it's quite simple. Fans are all closet country fans, but the problem is they're inside the closet. They hate to admit that they're country, but everybody loves rock and roll. So yes, we are progressing to more rock, but you will still hear a slight bit of country in our music. Yes, guys, the souvenirs that never lose. Working with Bryce as the bass player is probably the easiest thing in the world. There's no words needed. It's a glare from me to him. It's a glare from him to me. And because we've been playing together for so long, I know exactly what he means. And the same goes to him. So it's just one stare, one look, one smile, one nod. And between myself and Bryce, we know exactly what is coming or what should have been done. Again. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> preparing for studio, preparing for tour, it's two completely different things. <laughs> On tour, you play, you make a mistake, you get fined. So, it's kind of a thing that like you don't want to make mistakes because you're going to get nailed off to it. But preparing for studio, slightly different. It's got to be perfect. You cannot make a mistake. And if you do, you just do it over and you do it over until you get it right. <laughs> I missed the f***ing Tom and I hit the cymbal. <laughs> Alright, right, here we go. Oh, that's not good. I did it again. <laughs> My f***ing Marilise.
Maybe I can, I'll watch where I'm eating now. So there's the definite uh, difference in preparing between touring and studio work. Okay, you can tip, bruh. How are you for time? Six o'clock. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Lacking a song every half an hour. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a hard one. Yes. Keep giving them the easy one. Done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Done with that. I'll take it that was she loves me not. That is she loves me not. That's what I This is a rock star kicking in. <laughs>